In this movie, we're going to cover metric functions. Metric is simple lingo for number, so we'll be dealing with numbers. In our formula field, let's go ahead and right click and press new. And we'll call this metric formula one. You can really name it whatever you see fit. Now the thing about metrics is they're designed to measure. Hence, it's essentially a number, whether it's a long integer, short integer, a decimal. We can still add, subtract, divide, find a percentage, so on. In this case, we have revenue amount and refund amount. If I click the division symbol, the slash, and divide that by refund amount, I get a percentage. Although, I would say that it makes sense to reverse these. You can also type this in by hand, but I think it's easier to drag and drop and you don't have to deal with the spelling errors. I should have paid more attention in grade school. Notice what we get here. We have two numbers that we can use divided by a revenue amount. And we could equally, instead of divide, subtract the refund amount. I could also add it, make a percentage out of it, or do any number of things. If I look at my math, I can even do abstract, I can get the sign, I can round, I can round up, I can truncate, I can find a ceiling, a floor, find the remainder. I could also do any type of summary functions well here. I can also get into Crystal's defined financial functions, but I'm going to leave that for you guys to experiment. It all depends on who designed the formula, if it's worth you using. Metric functions, of course, are unique, but as beginners go, you guys need to be careful of one thing and that's a division by zero. Now in Excel you get a nice little message saying what the heck. However in Crystal and in databases in general you try to divide by zero and you get a dead halt. For example I'm going to change this to a division sign. I'm going to check it. Crystal will tell me that there are no errors found meaning that my syntax is correct and in theory will produce a result. But when I save and close and then I pull into my formula I get this error. This is the vaunted division by zero. This halts everything. You could try and just close out of this and tell it that it's okay, but then your entire screen will be blank. It will pull no data back whatsoever because of this error. I bring this up to beginners because it's one of the first things that they may hit, especially as they try and do percentages. With addition subtraction, there's really nothing to worry about. If a value goes to zero or below zero, it's no problem. When you try and divide by zero, however, you do run into a few problems. Now there are tricks for getting around this, but we're going to cover that in a slightly more advanced lesson. In the meantime, I'm going to switch it back to subtraction, and I'm going to save and close. Then as we can see here, we now take in a revenue amount minus any refund amounts. And that gives us a net revenue, if you will. From here, you could also choose to format it by highlighting the field and calling it money. These fields are often the easiest to work with simply because everyone understands addition, and formulas, and math, and algebra to a degree. You can add this field plus this field minus this field. We could also use this with other formulas. Let's go ahead and right click on our metric formula one. And this time, I'm going to put this whole first calculation into a parenthesis. And then I'm going to divide by my date formula two. Notice what happened. The point of this is to show you that you don't just have to use database fields, but you can use user defined fields in your formula. Our date formula 2 is defined by the number of days since the transaction date to the current date. So, what this is showing me is I made 16 cents a day for the last 2,000 days on my first line here. Assuming, of course, that was the only collection I made since then, or the only transaction. There's a tremendous amount of flexibility in this formula editor but you have to be careful how you use it. These are all stored in the report. None of these calculations per se are stored in the database or directly pulled from the database. It may be derived indirectly, but you're not going to see a negative 16 number all of a sudden populate. In fact, it is virtually impossible for you in Crystal to modify the underlying data set. All you can do is pull. In short, if it's a number, you can pretty much do anything, but I will have to warn you, watch out for the divide by zero. Now, some people like to make the assumption that there are no zeros to divide by or it shouldn't be a zero, but often what shouldn't be actually is in reality and practice. A lot of it depends on how data is calculated or if it was a human error input. In short, be careful how you use these. Also be careful to 
explain and clarify that although your report may show this number, the base number pulled from the actual database itself, if you're using a formula, is different. Some people have a hard time understanding, but it's simple once you explain, hey, I pull the data and then I modify it using my formula editor. This is where a lot of people can also get into trouble because if there's an error in your formula, as in a human error as opposed to a syntax error, you could understate or overstate any kind of formula, metric, or percentage and really get into trouble.